right, welcome to the Brain Joe Virtual Classroom for the uh, Playing and Singing Workshop for House of the Rising Sun. Um, excited to be able to do this one. So, uh, this is one that I posted recently uh, as a song of the week. Um, it's long been a favorite uh, song of mine, but only one I recently adapted to the banjo. And I'll talk a little bit more about that process um, in a minute. Uh, first, so this song is uh, going to be in double D tuning if you want to go ahead and get to that tuning. So A, D, A, D, E. We'll check tuning in a minute. Um, and it's going to be using, it's a minor key, so we'll review too the chord shapes that are for this song. Um, so before we get to all that, I will first play the version of this song that I recently released, which is the one that we're going to be learning. And again, um, the all of the uh, the tab for the uh, vocal uh, backup and for the lead break that I play is available in the in the vault um, and in the tab download for this song. Um, and uh, so and it also covers the um, chord shapes that that are used. Um, but I'll be I'll be reviewing those as well. So, all right, here is the song "House of the Rising Sun." Such a great song, right? Um, so, like I said, uh, I've loved this song for a long time, and uh, the version—it's actually the, so the version that I first knew was the one by the Animals, which and probably a lot of people are familiar with as the as their pr first version of this song. It's actually an old folk song that the Animals just adapted and and covered. Um, but, uh, and I think I'd probably messed around with it on the banjo maybe before a little bit, um, but didn't, wasn't super happy with it then. Um, and the, uh, the rhythm in the animals version is actually like a six, eight time signature. Um, so if you remember that song, it's, uh, so if we go 
one, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, like that. That's the rhythm. There is a house in New Orleans. Two, three, four, five, six. They call the rising sun. Four, five, six, one, two, and it's been the ruin. So again, that's the that's the underlying rhythm for that particular version. Now you can play six eight and claw hammer. Um, it and and I you know I wouldn't discourage you from ever doing so, but uh, it doesn't you do lose some of the the drive of claw hammer banjo when you do it that way. Uh, when you play six eight, you don't get that kind of nice um, pulsating alternating rhythm. So that you sort of automatically impart to a song with the claw hammer strokes, you kind of have to adapt the stroke for that particular time signature. Now, recently I was just listening to some of my playlists and I heard a version of House of the Rising Sun by Doc Watson. And there he's actually playing in a different rhythm. He's playing in our classic 2-4, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck, boom, chuck. So instead of that original, there is a house, now we have there is a house in New Orleans, two, one, two, one, two, they call the rising sun, chick, boom, chick, boom, chick, boom, and it's been the ruin of many a poor boy, and God, I know who I'm one. So, <clears throat> as soon as I heard that, I was like, oh, that's what I have to do on the banjo, that's going to sound great, claw hammer, and indeed it does, I love, love playing this song now, it's one of my favorites. So... Um, I say all that to say that there are some songs that sort of naturally work well for claw hammer banjo, and a lot of that has to do with the kind of the fundamental rhythmic structure. But if you want to, uh, you can. There are a couple of ways of adapting songs without that structure for claw hammer, playing them claw hammer style. One is to adapt your playing and keep the same time signature, which you can do. Um, you can play things in three, four times, six, eight times, so odd measures, I mean, odd time signatures, essentially, um, where it's not, um, you can't automatically map the typical claw hammer pulse to that um, time signature. Or the other option is to change the rhythmic structure like we did here. So just something to think about for those of you who are looking to move outside of the traditional banjo material into other songs that you would want to play on the banjo. Those are kind of the two ideas. And um, there are some other examples of songs that where we've done or I've done that um, and uh, might do that some more in the future and do some of these workshops to, to demonstrate that as well. Uh, I think hearing examples of how you take an odd rhythm time signature and create an even rhythm time signature out of it uh, really helps you then to, to figure out you know, how you can do that for yourself. All right, so all that out of the way. So we're now we're back in familiar bum ditty land um, to play this song. And uh, the, the other difference of this song is that it's in a minor key. All right, so that's another little adaptation. Um, again, uh, like I said, some songs adapt really well to the banjo. One is their rhythmic structure. The other is their harmonic structure. Um, so if it plays well in a particular banjo tuning. Now, even though you may not be used to playing that many minor sounding tunes in, uh, in uh, uh, double D tuning or double C, uh, it actually works really well. But we'll need to review our chord, uh, chord positions here, which are really important for this song. Um, so you have on the screen there the chords for House of the Rising Sun. It starts with a D minor. So our D minor is real easy. All we do is fret the first fret of the, fir of the first string, okay? And again, these chord progressions are in the tab download. I mean, the, not the chord progressions are in there, but the, uh, the actual chord diagrams as well as a reminder. But again, this one, D minor, first fret, first string, goes to an F, okay? Which again, which in this particular tuning, I'm in double D. Actually, let me go ahead, before we do that, let me make sure you guys have the right tuning. So we have a D on our fourth string. And make sure I'm in tune. <laughs> um, a on the third, a D on the second, an E on the first, and an A on the fifth. Now that's our usual kind of bright, happy sounding tuning, but we're that's why we're gonna have to play out of chord shapes for this song because we want the minor sound. All right, so this first one again, here's our, so review the tuning real quick, D, A, a D, E, a on the fifth. All right, so now there's our D minor. 
our F major, we're going to bar the third fret, and then we're going to place our pinky or ring on the fifth, first string fifth fret. So that's our F major. So again, this is this is basically your D major chord moved up three frets. So you have to bar that third fret. All right, now we move on to the G, which is just second fret of the uh, third string and third fret of the first string, which I can think of that as the F shape in, in double C tuning. So this is a familiar shape for you. And then the last shape is a B flat major. So same the first fret of the first string like we did with the D minor, add the third uh, string first fret there. Okay, so here's our first four chords. There is D minor. <clears throat> there is a house, F major, in New Orleans, G major, and then this B just this B flat just fills that space. It's not associated with a with a with a uh, vocal. They back to the D minor. Call the to our F rising, and now the only other chord is our A major, sun, which we know, this is what I think of as the G shape in double C, but it's again, second fret, fourth string, second fret, second string. All right, now we've covered them all, and we'll go back through the rest of the lyrics, and it's been D minor, F, the ruin of many a G, poor boy, B flat, and God. Now we're going to D minor, uh, back to the A, no. Or, um, you can add that third fret if you want to on the um, first string. No, I'm one. All right, so those are, the, those are our chords. Now, we want to do, make it sound like a banjo song, right? So, again, we're going to kind of, as we've done in the prior workshops and in the, playing, in the uh, set of playing and singing um, modules that are part of the Breakthrough Banjo course, um, we are going to start with kind of the most basic version. Just bum, and, bum ditties, right? On the, um, on the two bass strings. There is a house in New Orleans They call the rising sun And it's been the ruin of many a poor boy Nothing wrong with that. Perfectly respectable vocal backup for this song. Um, another layer of, of uh, interest or complexity we could do, as I've talked about before, is to go bum diddy bump a diddy. I particularly like this rhythm. You'll hear me use this throughout a lot of my vocal backup. I like the drive that it gives. Works really well for this song. So I'm going bum diddy. And then bump a ditty. Whoops, sorry. And I'm usually, and this is always, in, this is going to be indicated in the tab. I'm doing bum ditty. Sorry, bum ditty. And then I'm doing a skip stroke. So I'm leaving off that bump. I'm bum ditty, and then a ditty is essentially what I'm doing. You don't have to do that, but that's what I like to do. And I, again, that'll be indicated as a skip stroke in the tab vocal backup when I do that. But it gives that sound. There is a house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. And it's been the room of many a poor boy. And God, what's that chord? Yeah. And no, I'm one. So again, all I'm doing is playing that rhythm over those chords. The next thing we can do, to, uh, if we want, is start throwing in some melody notes. Again, you'll see here why it's so useful to know your chord, to have your chords, and to know them and be fingering them, um, which I've talked about before. Is oh, I always recommend uh, whenever you're playing. So that's because 
So many of your melody notes are found in the chord shapes or the chord, or the chord tones. So there's our, our first note of the song. There is. So that on that open second string. There is. So we could do that twice to open if we're gonna if we want to start adding in some melody notes behind our voice, add in the same thing we're singing uh, on our banjo. So there is. Uh, now we go to that same second string. There it is again. House in. Now we're forming this next chord. It's on the first string. New Orleans. So again, I got every melody note without having to do anything but continue to finger the chords. <clears throat> All and just finding them on the second string and the first string. There is a house in New Orleans. Alright, they <clears throat> they call. So there are open second string. Now it's the third string on this chord shape. Rising sun. Now in this last chord, this A, it's the open third. We still haven't done anything but form the chord shapes. And it's been open second. Been the run. same thing. Third. Open, I mean, uh, third, uh, first string, many a four. First string, four, and God. Open second, God, I. This is the only place where we have to finger a different fret than what we're already playing with our chord. So if we want to get this melody notes, we go fourth fret of the third string. No, I'm one. You don't have to do that. God, I know, I'm one. Again. You don't have to throw in every melody note. It's nice to know where they are. It's nice to practice finding them like that. Um, and then deciding where you want to throw them in, where you don't. Again, if you're fingering the chords and you're not playing melody notes, then you're playing harmony notes, which is fine too. And then if you mix them back in. When you play melody notes behind your voice, it sounds like so much is going on. Um, already a lot sounds like it's going on in Kohlheimer, but even more um, in that situation. So. There is, so I'll play kind of uh, how I would play it. The, mixing and mashing up all of these ideas. There is house in New Orleans. They call the rising sun. And it's been the room of many a poor boy. Sorry, many a poor boy. Since this is, I don't <clears throat> spend a whole lot of time playing D minor songs out of double D tuning. So uh, every time I, if we're revisiting this song, I have to kind of remember my the, the chord shapes in here and so forth. So if you have to do the same thing, that's normal. <laughs> Certainly normal for me. Um, and not like, whereas if I'm, in, if I'm playing a, a typical song out of double D tuning and using, you know, playing in the key of D major, then all those chords are automatic. But here, I kind of have to think about it. And actually, that's a fun challenge. Uh, it's a good, it's good for your uh, brain to do that. So, anyways, um, again, if you're just getting started playing and singing, um, this one may be a challenge for you. <coughs> Although, if you just start with that basic way I did it, um, I think I think you can do it. Um, but don't be discouraged if it's a little more trouble than, than, a, than another song because, like I said, we're using some new chords, uh, we're less familiar with these kind of progressions and so forth, so give yourself a little bit more uh, time to adjust to all that. And if it feels too difficult for now, go to some easier stuff, keep working on your skills, playing and singing, and then revisit it in the future. But uh, awesome, awesome song. It sounds so good, and uh, I know it's one I'll continue to be playing for a long time on the banjo. All right, if you have any questions about it, um, let me know in the virtual classroom uh, comment box. Also, if you would like for me to walk through the um, kind of the, the solo version where I go up the neck and everything, um, if that would be helpful, let me know there and I'll do that workshop as well. All right, I'll see you in the next video.